Hey y'all, I'm Mandy and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner where I show you several new recipes and I hope, hope that you'll give them all a try. This week ended up being kind of like a theme week and I really did not intend for it to be. This week it's all about casseroles. <laughs> Um, so if you love to try new casseroles, make sure you stay tuned. And there's some different ones that you wouldn't, that I had never really even heard of. So even if you're not a huge casserole fan, you might be surprised. Stick around. I don't have a subby supper segment this week simply because we were at the beach last week and we got back this week. I really did not do a great job meal planning for the week and didn't have time to sit down and go through your emails. But I do have a lot of emails and I would love for you to send me an email if you haven't already. So if you would like for your recipe to be featured here on my What's For Dinner videos in the Subby Supper segment, make sure you email me at mandyinthemaking2018 at gmail.com. I will take a look at those and we choose one each week, except this week, sorry about that. Uh, to feature here on my channel, not only do I share your recipe, but I share a little bit about you. And if you'll send me a picture as well, I'll pop that here on the screen. Okay, enough of me talking. Let's get cooking. Tonight, we're going to have Philly cheesesteak casserole. I'm excited about this one. I've heard about this. I've seen different versions of it, but let's give this one a try. To get started, I'm going to dice up these peppers and this onion. It calls for a yellow onion, but I didn't have one. So we're just going to make do with a red onion. we go, all of those are in bite-sized pieces. The recipe calls for a pound and a half of ground beef. I'm gonna be using two pounds. Just gonna start browning that up. The recipe calls for one clove of garlic, but y'all know we can't just do one clove. So I've got three kind of small cloves here. While this is still cooking and it's still pink, I'm gonna go ahead and add in all of our onions and our bell pepper and our garlic. I'm also gonna add in about a teaspoon of seasoned salt. And now we're just gonna let this continue cooking all the way through. The recipe doesn't call for it, but we are gonna add just a little bit of black pepper in here. We're still letting the beef mixture cook. I'm gonna go ahead and prepare this part. I need four eggs. The recipe calls for a fourth a cup of heavy cream. I'm using about a third a cup since we're using a little more ground beef. I need about a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And about a teaspoon of hot sauce. Tabasco goes a long way, so I don't know that I'll do quite a teaspoon, but there we go. Now I'm just gonna whisk all of that together. All right, this is finished cooking. I just need to drain all of the grease off, so let's do that. Okay, so now we're gonna assemble the casserole. The first layer is the beef mixture. So let's put this along the bottom of this. I need to spray this with some Pam. Calls for four slices of provolone cheese that you're just gonna kinda tear up and put over the top but we'll see, I might need some more because if you've been around for a minute, y'all know we love cheese in this family. 
What do you think, baby? You think we're gonna need some more cheese? Oh yeah. I think we are too. Will you get it out of the fridge for me? Sure. Thank you. Gracie's over here. Gracie. She hears the cheese wrapper. This is this is real life right here. Grace. So I added six pieces of cheese to the top. Now I've got this mixture of the eggs, cream, hot sauce, and Worcestershire, and I'm just gonna pour this all over the top. Now this is going in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes or so. This has come out of the oven. We're gonna let it sit for about five minutes before we slice into it and serve it up. This looks amazing. It does. Really does. Mmm. <laughs> That's amazing. Philly cheesesteak stuffing is what it tastes like. Well, I'm glad mm. you like it. It's really good. It was really simple, and that's what I love about it. And you know, this would be good if you added mushrooms to it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Cole is not a fan of mushrooms, so I did not do that. But I feel like mushrooms, or I mean, if you wanted to do some type of steak to make it really true Philly cheesesteak, mm -hmm. that would be great too. But I found this recipe on Facebook. I will have it linked mm -hmm. below for you. Tonight's meal is another casserole. This one is really, really simple. It doesn't involve chopping up anything. It's so easy. It's called teriyaki chicken casserole. Gracie. You want something? <laughs> We're gonna get started on the sauce first. I've got a saucepan here. I'm gonna turn it on to medium heat. We're gonna add in 3 fourths a cup of low sodium soy sauce a half a cup of water, a fourth a cup of brown sugar, and in here I have a half a teaspoon of minced garlic and a half a teaspoon of ground ginger. I just used the ginger paste. We're going to heat this to boiling. I'm gonna put the lid on it. This is starting to come to a boil, so I'm gonna take the lid off. We're gonna let it boil for just a minute. And while we let it boil, I'm gonna make a cornstarch slurry. Is that the word, baby? <laughs> um, I've got two tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of water and then we're gonna add that into this to thicken it up. And we're just gonna let this come back up to a boil until it starts to thicken a bit, and then we'll remove it from the heat. It's already thickening, that was quick. So that took like no time whatsoever for it to thicken up. We've got this sauce. Now let me show you what we're gonna do with it. I've got this nine by 13 pan, I sprayed it with Pam, and I have two chicken breasts in here. They were really thick chicken breasts, so I just cut them in half. I'm gonna add about a cup of this onto the chicken. This is gonna go in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes. So this is my new towel that I just got from a very sweet subscriber. Jeannie made this for me. She knows I love Ray Dunn. And so she made this towel that says, hey y'all on Mandy, Mandy in the making. I am obsessed with it. Thank you so much, Jeannie. So while our chicken is in the oven, I'm going to cook 
a cup of rice because this should give us about three cups of cooked rice. I have a 20 ounce bag of this broccoli stir fry. I'm just going to cook this in the microwave per the directions here while our rice is cooking and our chicken is finishing up. Okay, so it's been 35 minutes. We've got our chicken, it is done. Now we're just going to shred it here in the pan. Oh, he's gonna make sure it's done. Do it to it, baby. Ooh. It's done. Look at that. I was grabbing two forks and he said, give me the shredder shredder. <laughs> yeah. The shredder shredder, right, shredder, baby? Shredder. This is a show enough shredder. Show enough. How much shreddation do you want? Shreddation? Uh, I don't know, into good size, like bite size chunks. Whoa. Chunks. Whoa. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> How about we just get a little something on the counter there for later? <laughs> so Stephen wanted to add a little extra seasoning. He's adding some nature seasons in and a little bit of pepper. We still have a casualty over here, y'all. <laughs> all right, so now he's gonna add in all of the cooked rice, which is about three cups of rice. And he's gonna add in our broccoli stir fry veg vegetables that we cooked in the microwave. It's got a little water in there. That's should okay. We drain it out. No, I think it'll be okay. I think we should drain it out. All right, drain what it. Do you think? Drain it. <laughs> Y'all are getting the raw. <laughs> oh, it was more water than I thought. Yeah, this is a good bit of water. Okay. All right. Now add it in there. We're gonna stir it all together and we're also gonna add in most of that oh, sauce yeah. that we have left over. So we're gonna reserve just a tiny little bit of this sauce for the very end when we go to eat. Oh boy, that was hot. Oh. Carefully pouring this. <laughs> okay, that should be good, babe, because there's still a lot of sauce on that chicken. And just stir it all together and we're gonna stick this back in the oven at 350 for another 15 minutes. in for 15 minutes. Mm. You looking good in those oven mitts. Yeah, very fashionable. <laughs> oh my word. This is looking good. Are you gonna get your chopsticks out, baby? Man, yeah. Man, yeah. Let's do this. Chopsticks ready. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's some good stir fry right there. Sweet. Oh yeah, tons of flavor in that. Definitely nice touch with the, the sauce on top. Mm. The sauce is so good. Is it? Oh yeah. It smells heavenly. Our house has mm. been smelling so good. Wow. Here it comes, folks. Mm -hmm. You know he's got to kick up the heat. You got know it. he has to. That's the heat. <clears throat> All right. This is what he does. I bet that yum yum sauce would be good on this. Oh, I bet that would be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we get two thumbs up on this one? This is really good. Sweet. Simple, fast, delicious. Mm-hmm. It definitely hits the spot. Yay. Okay, for tonight's dinner, we are having Parmesan crusted chicken 
we are having a copycat Cracker Barrel hash brown casserole. And I got this recipe from Fallon over on Moss Family TV. I've been wanting to try it for quite some time. And then I'm also gonna make my green beans. I've shown that several times, so I'm really not gonna go over how I make my green beans. If you're interested in that, I will link the video below. So I've got my green beans here. I'm gonna bring them up to a simmer and then just let them simmer while I'm cooking the rest of our dinner. Um, I'm gonna get started on the hash brown casserole next because that's gonna take the next longest and then the chicken won't take long at all. Here's everything I'm gonna need for the hash brown casserole. I'm gonna link the um, recipe below, of course, but Fallon was talking about how she used cheddar cheese soup instead of cream of chicken and she thinks that made a world of difference, so I'm gonna use that. We'll need this whole thing of sour cream. I'm gonna dice this up. I need this whole bag of hash browns. It has already been thawed. I just defrosted it in the microwave just to make sure that it was all thawed. I'm gonna need pretty much this whole block of cheddar cheese. I'm going to grate it. We're going to melt this stick of butter. I've got a little bit of pepper over here and then we'll use some minced garlic too. Obviously, not the entire thing. The first thing I'm gonna do is dice my onion and grate my cheese. This is my favorite. I'm using two of my favorite kitchen gadgets for these two things. Um, I love this thing. If you have not checked this out yet, I will link it below, but I know a lot of you have ordered it because it's just amazing. So I'm gonna grate this cheese really quickly. And now it says to use a small yellow onion. Mine was pretty medium, almost large, so I'm just gonna use half of it. It says to finely chop it, or finely dice it. Done. Now I just need to melt my butter. So I defrosted these, thawed them out, and I just patted them dry. If you've been with me for a while, you've saw not too long ago, we made hash browns and I just used that cool cheese grater to make our hash browns. I had bought these and these have been in my freezer since before I had realized that you could make really easy hash browns with that cheese grater. So I just wanted to go ahead and use this up, but next time I do this recipe, I will most likely just grate my own or make my own hash browns. Okay, so I've got all of my hash browns in here. I had a 30 ounce bag. I think the recipe calls for a 32 ounce bag. I'm gonna use almost all of my cheese. I am gonna reserve some for the top though. I'm going to put in my onion. I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of minced garlic. Mm, maybe a little more, we love garlic. Y'all know this. My can of cheddar cheese soup. and 16 ounces of sour cream. Now that I've mixed all of this up, I'm gonna add in some black pepper. Stir this all together, and then I'm gonna put it in a nine by 13 dish that I've already sprayed with Pam. I was about to spread all of this around in here and then I looked up and saw that I still had melted butter that I did not add in. So we're just gonna add it in here. We're just gonna go with it. I'll just stir it around. It'll be okay. Don't tell anybody I did this, okay? Thanks. Now I'm just gonna top everything with cheese. And it's gonna go in the oven for I think 35 minutes at 350. I cannot wait. This already smells so incredibly good. Now we're gonna get started on the chicken. This is really simple. Um, I cut two chicken breasts in half and then pounded them out to the really thin. I'm gonna have an egg mixture here, Parmesan cheese, and then it's just gonna go on this plate and we'll take it over to the stove top. For the egg mixture, I've got one egg that I've already whisked. I add about a tablespoon of water or so just to thin it out a little bit. I'm gonna add some salt and pepper and about a teaspoon of minced garlic 
directly to here. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of poultry seasoning to my chicken. I don't like to not season my chicken. That's just something I've learned over the years. It will come out a little on the bland side if you don't season it before you cook it. So I'm going to use some poultry seasoning and I think that'll give it a good flavor. I'm dipping my chicken in the egg mixture. And then I'm just gonna place it over here in this Parmesan cheese. I have about two cups of Parmesan cheese. This is shredded. I bought the pre-shredded this time. I could not find a block of it at my grocery store. So just going with pre-shredded. You could probably use grated too if you wanted to. That is it. So I've got this pan here heated to about medium high. I'm gonna add in almost a whole stick of butter and a little bit of olive oil. And I'm gonna do these in batches, do two at a time. Basically, I'm just gonna put it in there, make sure it's really good and hot and uh, let it crust on one side before I flip it. Okay, I'm hoping this will take like maybe four or five minutes on each side and then I'll flip it. And I didn't use the entire stick of butter. I took part of it out. And so what I'll do is just, after this batch is done, if I need some more butter, I can just throw the rest of that butter in there just so that it doesn't dry out. Our second batch is in. You do wanna make sure you continuously turn your chicken just so that it doesn't burn on one side. But it took about a total of 10 minutes or so to cook it all the way through. Chicken? Yeah. Chicken's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cole, what did you take a bite of first that you were like, oh, green beans. oh, the green beans. He loves the way I make green beans. Okay, so this is like a copycat recipe of Cracker Barrel's um, hash brown casserole, babe. Oh, okay. He was not in there for me making this part. He was working. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. <laughs> that is really good. Yay, I'm so glad. That's really good. Wow, lots of flavor in this for sure. This is comfort food. Yes. Delicious. That's what I was telling Cole. It looks like we went to Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. Look at these plates. I mean, mm -hmm. that just looks like Cracker Barrel food right there. Yeah. Gracie Lou, what do you think? You got cheese. Don't act like you haven't had anything. I gave you cheese. Well, the one thing is that them green beans are like 10 times better than Cracker Barrel. Yeah, sure. they really are. <laughs> They're really good. Oh, and I wanted to point out too, y'all, that um, when I was looking back over the recipe after the hash brown casserole went into the oven, yeah, it didn't call for minced garlic in there. I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was thinking maybe about this dish over here, but... Oh well, a little minced garlic never hurt anybody. You put garlic in the potatoes? Yeah. You did the right thing. <laughs> it didn't call for it, but I stuck some in there. You know how we do. 
I hope you enjoyed this week's recipes. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. That does help out my channel. Comment below and let me know which one you plan on trying or which one you plan on trying first if you're gonna try more than one. And don't forget to, if you have a recipe that you would like to submit, make sure you send that to my email. If you haven't already, I would love for you to join my YouTube family. Hit that red subscribe button below so you don't miss any more of my videos. And with that being said, see y'all next time. Bye.